Let's just look at the three-dimensional coordinate system. For our textbook, positive x is to the right, positive y is up, and positive z is forward. Here's an example of a vector that's coming to that front right quadrant. So it has something in the positive x, positive y, and positive z direction. In two dimensions, we broke vectors into their x and y components. Here's that x component for the vector in three dimensions. And here's the z component going in the positive z direction. And here is the y component coming up, coming up in the positive y direction. Start at the tail, walk to the front. We'll break the vector into components using triangles. First notice the right triangles on the ground. This will give us our x and z components, those triangles on the ground there. To find the y component of our vector, we're going to create another triangle that's standing straight up. Now this is another right-hand triangle, and the side that's going straight up, that's our y component. And you can break it into, see it as triangles, or as rectangles, so whichever way you want to walk around these sides, we just need to know the side in the x direction, in the z direction, and in the y direction. Let's walk around this one more time from the front. Okay, so you see where your positive axes are. Our z component is coming forward, and then our x component is going to the right, and it doesn't matter if you grab the front or the back of that rectangle. Either one is the same length. And Y is going straight up. And these are all right-handed triangles that you're looking at here. I'm also going to label this side H. Now this is the side that connects the two triangles. The base of the triangle standing up is the hypotenuse of the triangle on the ground. Let me just rotate around this system one more time slowly for you so you can get a good look at the rectangles and triangles involved. Because once you can see this for one of these vectors, you can create the same rectangles and triangles for all of the vectors involved. So again, there's just a rectangle straight up that has a vector corner to corner in it. And then there's a rectangle on the ground that is created by two right triangles. Okay, so let's go ahead and try this out for one of the problems that's similar to what's in the book. So I'm, I'm giving you one of the figures that this is kind of what the homework problem look, looks like, and you're going to have to really study these diagrams to see which direction everything is going. Okay, so let's go ahead and take just this force that's coming out into the positive so plus x plus y plus z. And if it helps to draw this cube in here to sort of orient yourself, try that out. Okay, so we have the plane that the force is in. So this, this plane is coming straight up off the ground. If you look at it, 90 degrees. So we're looking at, at the part that's coming straight up and straight over. And to get the y component of the force, so this is the part of the force that's going straight up, going in the y direction. And they might give you this angle off the floor. They might give you another angle. So you really have to identify that 90 degree angle triangle and then walk around Sokotoa. Are you opposite that angle? So opposite would be the sine theta piece of it or adjacent to it is going to be the cosine theta. But don't just memorize this. Make sure that you can see that, that 90 degree triangle in there. Okay, so there's what's standing straight up. And then we also have the triangles on the ground. And the triangles on the ground are going to define the X and the Z components of this. So if we look at this guy on the ground, and this is the base of the triangle standing up. So this F cosine theta, whatever we found for H, I'm calling it H because it's the hypotenuse of the two triangles on the ground. And in the, in the 3D diagram, it doesn't look like 90 degree angles, but these are, are 90 degree angles. So you're going in the X direction and then in the Z direction here. 
and you can fill in angles. So depending on which angle they give you, you're going to have to decide what's adjacent to that angle, what's opposite that angle, and it's a rectangle. So if you grab one side of that rectangle or the other side of the rectangle, you can see which sides are the same length. But you're walking from the tail of the specter up to the nose of it, and you're walking straight in the Z direction, in the X direction, and then straight up would be the Y direction. Okay, so it's, yeah, it's a matter of trying to find those angles and walk around them. You start with something like this. So maybe we have a force that's 200 newtons and they give the angle between that force and the Y axis. So a lot of times they'll, they'll define the angles between the force vector and one of the coordinate axes. So this would be theta Y because it's between the Y axis and force. And see if you can turn this into X, Y, and Z components. So again, Let's walk around that triangle standing straight up first. So we have the hypotenuse that's going to connect the top and the bottom together. We have the vertical piece, the piece coming straight up off the ground, and we have the piece on the floor. What I'm going to go ahead and do is take this over to Excel and walk around filling in a table in Excel. So I'll go ahead and use my snipping tool and just grab this one and we'll set this up. So edit, copy, and here we are in Excel, control V. And you don't have to format this exactly the same as I am, but let's go ahead and say our force in this case is 200 newtons. And we're going to split this into the piece going straight up in the air, so the Y direction, and then the hypotenuse, so that's kind of the base of the triangle standing straight up. And then we'll also have FX and we'll have FC. And you have to sort of think through what angles are given, what directions it's going in, so positive or negative. In this case, everything is in the positive direction. And I'll go ahead and put some of these angles in here. So the Y direction, let's make this degrees and radians. We have 40 degrees, which is, there's our radians. Okay. So here's one of the pieces of information we have, and then the next piece of information is going to be that, that 30 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and say Y is equal to 200, and then can you tell if this is going to be sine or cosine? So if we look at the Y component coming straight up, see how that's adjacent to the 40 degrees? So I'm going to go ahead and say cosine. And then the piece on the floor, that would be opposite of that 40 degrees. So we'll say sine of 40 degrees. Okay, so this would be the triangle that's standing straight up. So if this is 200, we would have 153 and 128. For the, for the triangle on the ground, we're coming off of this, this 128. Let me just move that down there. Okay, so here's the 128, and this is the piece of it that is right here on the ground, the, the hypotenuse of the triangle on the ground. So for our X component is X, adjacent or opposite to the 30 degrees. So in this case, our X component, and make sure you're taking it off the hypotenuse now, not the 200, but that hypotenuse. So X is adjacent to that 30 degrees. I'll just put that in here. So adjacent is the cosine. P 
piece of that. And again, make sure we're grabbing the hypotenuse, not the 200. And then the Z component, again, we're going to grab that hypotenuse. And the Z component here is going to be opposite that 30 degrees. So opposite, that's going to be sine. Okay, so really study this. There's also one more thing. So we have the angle between the y-axis and the force. What is the angle between the x-axis and the force? Or between the z-axis and the force? <clears throat> and notice that the coordinate system is adjacent to that angle. So these are going to be defined by the cosines. Okay, so let's go ahead and think about what angle is in between the x direction and the force vector. So if I draw a triangle that has a plane between that vector, so that the 200 is on one side of it, and then the x direction is on the other side of it. And think about the sides of the cube. It's hard to see that 90 degrees. But if you realize that, that the side of this cube is 90 degrees with this corner, then you can orient yourself and see that this angle right here, that's going to be defined between fx and the long vector, our 200 newton force here. And it's, it's adjacent. So what we have is cosine theta x is equal to adjacent over hypotenuse fx divided by 200. Or if I want to figure out what that angle is, then it's going to be the arc cosine. So a couple of these other problems, they'll ask you to find the angle between the vector and the coordinate system. And sometimes vectors are defined by that angle. So I'm going to go ahead and say equals arc cosine, and we're looking at the x component of the force divided by that long side, so adjacent over hypotenuse. That's what that angle is describing. And this will print this out in um, radians. So I'll go ahead and change that over to pi. So that would be the angle between the x-axis and where that force is. And we can do that for the z-axis, too. So we're going to be coming up to the same 200. So I can go ahead and just keep that constant with F4. But for z, I'm going to pull this down. z is going to be the arc cosine of the z component over that force. So those would be the three angles that would define that vector, the angle it makes with the x, y, and z components there. OK, so there's going to be a couple more questions in the quiz. And I want to see if you can take it from a more simplistic diagram and add the rest of that cube yourself to be able to see where those 90 degree triangles are and then map out those x, y, z components of that force to be able to, to fill in the dotted lines. And it, it might help to, to sketch this out on scratch paper and draw those dashed lines that are parallel to the axes, fill in that cube so you can really tell where the what the angles are describing there. So here's another look at it and see if you can understand the directions of that force. So if I fill in that cube, just again, lines parallel to the coordinate axes. And then you can see which direction the components of that force are in. This is a real um, challenging thing for a lot of people to do. So take your time with it. And I think it really does help to draw these figures out on a piece of paper to, to see what's going on there.